I wanted to talk about Kamala Harris's recent appearance on the Call Her Daddy podcast. Now, I would assume most of you don't listen to the Call Her Daddy podcast. The Let's Get Cancer podcast? First of all, most of our audience is male, so that makes sense. But even the women who watch this show are ladies, so they don't watch such disgusting drivel as Call Her Daddy. And I feel I need to take this opportunity to just say I'm on a one-woman crusade against <laughs> Call Her Daddy. I have hated this podcast for years, and I'm glad that people are finally catching up. So Kamala Harris decided that during a national crisis in many different forms, but specifically Hurricane Helene, it was her best opportunity to go on a sex podcast with Call Her Daddy's Alex Cooper to talk smart. about women's rights. I see the vision. Obviously, I, it's wait. the most important issue that everyone needs to be talking I, about right I, now. I know next to nothing about Call Her Daddy. Here's, is it really a sex we actually, podcast? We, we have yeah. a clip to show you to explain that, uh, what the show yeah. is for. So here, let's just show you the clip to uh, you know, familiarize you, you. All right, here we go. You work with the balls and the asshole okay, on so a man. The balls, Whoa. like it really <laughs> depends on the guy. Like he some does. guys don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Some have less sensitivity and you can tug on them, yeah. put them all in your mouth. Please don't tug yeah. on my balls. Some guys are like, fuck. Yeah, it hurts whenever yeah. you try to do it. Um, and it's so interesting to always see like, the difference in the balls because some have like really tight smaller really ones and then ones. other really saggy interesting fact about mike i don't know if this is every guy but he has something that we call like morning balls in the morning they're like super tight like sucked up like looks like a 12 year old okay i think Why? we've heard yes, enough like really tight and i think we've heard enough uh, is this okay so this is imagine if men did a podcast like this talking about labias no it's insane it's <laughs> insane and and this podcast has existed for several years now it started out with two hosts alex cooper is the remaining host it's gone through a bit of an evolution where it used to be more vulgar as you just saw and it's gone through an evolution where now alex cooper mainly interviews celebrities and now politicians um, and this was her opportunity to talk about women's rights. So she prefaced this episode saying, I'm the host of Call Her Daddy. I know I'm not, you know, qualified to be talking about political <laughs> issues, but I am qualified to talk about abortion. Thank you for the fifth oh crisis boy. party today. Somebody did put in chat earlier, they're saving the dogs, they're saving the cats. <laughs> That's, I like that. Okay. Isn't it, uh, didn't you guys talk about a few weeks ago? Didn't you guys talk about a few weeks ago about Gen Z's actually like skipping through sex scenes and movies and TV shows? Yep. Yeah. So oh, I assume the pointless. the listenership for Call Her Daddy is mostly narcissistic millennial women who their top priority in life is being able to open their legs to as many strangers as possible to um, get splooged in, and mm. that oh, means that like their the number that one issue for what they're deciding in this election is abortion because abortion allows them to decide to Keep be going. as promiscuous as yeah. possible with zero consequences so that's why this was the main topic of that episode so i just wanted to watch a couple of clips of that episode and we can react um, this one? is the first one can we think of any law that gives the government the power to make a decision about a man's body let's hear kamala's response and i want to pose this question more to you and the daddy gang but mm -hmm. One of the biggest conversations in this year's election revolves around a woman's body. Mm -hmm. Yep. I want to take a moment, mm -hmm. and can we try mm -hmm. to think mm -hmm. of any law that gives the government the power she to really make a decision? I know she what really you're thinks she's cooking right She's now. just about quoting Kamala from the Kavanaugh trial. Body. Let's no. Pause. No. You absolutely Is there any law? idiot. No. No. Hey, wait, real quick. It's no. Look, we are a work in progress. <sighs> but here's the, one of the many things I so love about our country. Part of the strength of our country and our evolution as a country has been through the fight for the expansion of rights. Not the restriction of rights, but the expansion of rights. And we still have work to do. But I say that that work is born out of love of country. And it's hard work, but it's good work, and it's important work. And that's what's Dude, I'm thinking about running for president. I, that, I could do it better than this. You know, around election time, but every day, back to the conversation that we've been having about power. She has yet to say um, anything. 
The beauty of, of, course, of a did you expect her to? Is that we each as individuals I mean, have uh, the power to weigh in on this stuff. I've got the formula for Kamala's answers. One sentence buzzwords, mm-hmm. predictive text word salad. Yep. <laughs> well, it's the sign That's of a it liar. She, it's the sign of a liar if someone can talk at length about absolutely nothing and make it grammatically coherent. Well, you that's, know? that's the thing that I always think when I see her. And uh, a lot of people should think before they speak. Nobody should have to think for that long before saying six words. Right. Like, the work that we do is important. And because we do that work, we are important. <laughs> now, and, the important and the importance of work is that work is important. The retort yeah. to this was obviously the existence of, hello, the draft. Yeah, Mary, right. did you have to like put all your information onto a little card in order to vote? Or get no, student loans or no. anything. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember. That. It's so crazy. I feel like I remember. I remember doing that. Mm-hmm. I mean, and like just because there's not like a legal difference. I mean, go to the, back <laughs> to the first segment that we had on today's episode. Dude, society has different expectations for men and women. So just because there's not a legal mm-hmm. difference. Well, also, I mean, well, which there is. We already laws, debunked that. All laws are enforcing something over your body and your personhood. Obviously, no, if no, you, you break a law, you will go to rights. prison. All- At gunpoint, you will be forced into a cell. Yes. Like, that is literally control over your body. That, that applies. I think sure. the question, I do understand the question was more about, like, there are some laws that only apply to women. Are there any laws that only apply to men? And I think you made a good point that society's expectations often put women before men for example if you're on a sinking boat who gets saved first it's women and children there you go uh and men are expected to be helping people get off the boat knowing that the lifeboat's right there and they could get on it and live but they need to stay behind and risk death when you're in a crowded subway or a bus it, it's expected that the men get up and give his seat to a woman mm-hmm. which is fine it's like i'm not when we bring these things up we're not complaining about the role that is expected of us as men but almost we're highlighting the hypocrisy Mm -hmm. of call her daddy of society of modern day feminism it's not just hypocrisy it's what was really disgraceful yeah yeah it's just the lowbrow nature of what this podcast is what it represents who listens to it is so it's so disgraceful that like our current vice president Mm -hmm. is on this podcast are we shocked though when 50 shades of gray was like a top (laughs) seller for how long are we shocked i don't think that 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 that's i don't think it's a problem i don't think that that the fiction that women choose to read is a problem no. that that is is something that we sh- that is going to be an issue for society but that woman as president is a massive problem so there's there's two options right she's either going to actually be the president and be a total buffoon <laughs> because she's clearly an idiot or she if she gets elected she's not the president and it's run by essentially you know a committee right and she's just a figurehead and then there's absolutely oh. no accountability for the executive at all both of those options are terrible for the united states and the fact that there are people that watch that and are convinced that believe that that is a good answer that believe what she said don't even think of the selective service act don't even think of the fact that the the federal government her administration was trying to use osha to get people to take the shot whether they liked it or not so the idea that the federal government has has never made an attempt to to affect the bodies of men is absolutely wrong and they are laughing about it as if the, as if it's a fact they're even Delusional. being so just too stupid to know to even look into reality but so it's it's a terrible terrible development that the, that this is even a possibility it's absolutely mm-hmm. atrocious that's why cop but sorry there's a 20 dollar that i missed earlier from nate please let mary cook Thank yeah. you. <laughs> also, just with what, just because this is actually oh, relevant. Oh, sorry, we have another one from Sith Kill. I liked Tim's comment on this. There is a law specifically on men's bodies. It's called the draft. I didn't yeah. think of it that way, but I agree mm-hmm. with how he worded it. Yeah, actually, you're, when I was on Timcast, we had that conversation. Yeah. It's, and it's not, and it's not about like whether or not you have to deal with the repercussions of your actions, because that's all abortion is. Right. Abortion is women not wanting to deal with the repercussions of their action. Mm. They say, oh well, what about incest and rape? That 
is a, a vanishingly small number of abortions are for that. And every time any conservative or Republican has said, well, okay, we'll write something into the law for that, enough. then will you will you go ahead and, and support it? They still say no. Because, the, no, it doesn't. it's not that it's not enough. It's that they refuse to endorse anything that has any kind of any kind of limitations on the the ability to get out of the repercussions of your actions this is women are empowered to have sex with whoever they want whenever they want and they're not they're told they don't have to deal with the repercussions and that's the whole point of this so this isn't even about whether or not you live or die it's not about oh it destroys my life it means that you have to deal with the repercussions of having promiscuous sex or having sex and you so you have a, you're pregnant you have to have the baby they say oh it's forcing women to be pregnant no one forced you to have sex, so you're not being forced to be pregnant. Yes. You're being forced to deal with the repercussions of you getting pregnant. Whereas with men, you're forced to go into a into a combat zone and possibly die. Die if they tell you to. Yeah. We got another 20 from Gordon Shumway. Kamala Harris sounds like Sphinx from Mystery Men. Just repeats the same sentence over and over again in a different way and overall says nothing. I will just say, like personally, as a woman... I am so sick and tired of this fake ass dialectic that I have to engage in with the type of feminists who listen to the Call Her Daddy podcast, who believe themselves to be the empowered, liberated ones. They believe themselves to be emancipated from men entirely. And they're the ones who are so addicted to dick appointments. <laughs> that i mean they simply can't live without their dick appointments to the point where this is their number one deciding issue they are single issue voters and the single issue is i must have access to unlimited dick appointments with zero consequences they are addicted to men i mean they live off of it i mean they need male validation more than you can possibly imagine and they're telling me that I, I, as the woman who does not support abortion, which is like does half not, of you, it, yeah, I mean it's it's still quite a lot of us in America actually. Uh, I, as the one who doesn't support this monstrousness, I am the one who's being a pick me for for male validation by doing so. No. No, actually, well, it's the complete opposite. Another thing they pointed out was, hey, in America, we're trying we're trying to expand rights. Yeah, it's like, what about that sounds great, but it's like you, you're completely disregarding the rights of that being, that human being that is growing inside the woman. You're complete. You're not even factoring in or considering the rights of a fetus, mm -hmm. and, in the name of giving women more rights. Like it, it it's Phil. You, you're saying like how stupid they are, but you got to realize that's why Kamala has supporters. Because they're like, she's just like me for real. Well, their votes they're low are info just voters. as valuable as yours. They are low info voters. <laughs> they Everything you just said, they will embrace with open arms, Mary. They don't take it as a dig. They're like, of course I want unlimited access. You think you're going to offend me? There's no, no. point in, in pointing out, oh, the hypocrisy, because they embrace yeah, there, the hypocrisy. There, they love it. There is yeah. no point in pointing out the hypocrisy. So they spent, I don't know how many decades, convincing this generation of millennial and Gen Z women that abortion is the only thing that's life or death. That is the only issue to care about. But it's, it's the not only gonna... issue really that activates female voters, which is the biggest like risk factor for Trump in this election. It's Aside from all of that, pivot. I mean, because this is a pop culture show, what I mainly wanted to focus mm. on is just the fact that Call Her Daddy exists. And by the way, is the number one podcast for women. The number one podcast for women. This is the most popular podcast that women listen to. And a lot of people still haven't even heard of it. And when I've brought it up in the past, I've even had people who are self-avowed, you know, right-wing conservatives tell me, why are you even giving it attention? You shouldn't be talking about this. You're just shining a light on the degeneracy. You should just talk about something more constructive, something that's, that's generating something new. No, like we need to talk about these things. We need to shed light on these things. And if you're ignorant of the fact that Call Her Daddy even exists, or if you're ignorant of the reach it has, the influence it has, and why Kamala's team thought this was important in the first place, like, you've got to be part of the problem. What? There's no other way I can see it. I have a question for you. Why does it seem like is driving women towards this sexual content? Because if you look at, like, the top show on TV, it's Love Island, right? Top podcast, Call Her Daddy. 
top books usually have a lot of intimacy and sexual scenes in them, like top novels. What what where what is this coming from? Like Mary, I can only ask you because I am completely clueless. Like, what is pushing young women or women in general towards these sexualized themes? Well, in all of media. I said most of the listenership, if I had to guess, for Call Her Daddy is millennial women. But if we're talking about Gen Z women, since, um, you know, statistically we know that they came of age in the Me Too generation and they are the most uptight, neurotic generation that has walked the earth in perhaps all of history. Um, maybe this is the way they feel is hygienic to engage with sexuality is to do so from a, listening to a podcast, reading a book like or going on a dating way. app. Cause this is all like a device I can use to engage with sexuality rather than actual intimacy with another human being that leads to the creation of life. Th that's my best guess. But anyway, I just wanted to end on uh, listening to Kamala Harris reveal her bedroom secrets on Call Her Daddy because this is a sex podcast what? after all. Wait, what? Did she? What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I should say, YouTube, please don't censor us. This is an AI generated clip, but I just couldn't pass up the opportunity it's to like a, share it with all I, of you. I know her husband's into, you know, adultery, but Some uh, weird stuff, yeah. <laughs> um, let's take a listen. Madam Vice President Kamala Harris, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Alex. It's really great to be here. We are one month out from the election. My audience is basically just whores and gay guys. Why should they vote for you? <laughs> I think it's simple. Because they were planning vote to already. Me and you'll hey. have the first hoe in chief. Or <laughs> hoe in chief. chief. Hold on, boss. <laughs> that sh that is like a Trump ad. She just made a Trump ad. <laughs> they're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. Damn, no one's the dancing. Cat. I'm trying to make Kamala's face right now. Chief. Oh, okay. So sassy. So I love great. that you just called yourself Ho in Chief. My audience of girl boss whores really can relate to that. Get Google me off my this name ride. And Willie Brown <laughs> or Montel Williams, it's not an act. I love it. You've been married to Doug for 10 years now. What does he like in the bedroom? I'd say I'm probably the more adventurous one between the two of us. He's pretty vanilla, but you know, that pairs real nice with some chocolate. Is what this AI? Like <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. thank All God. Of stuff. Breath play, knife play, some light BDSM. He oh. really loves to get pegged. <laughs> Most people would assume that. That's definitely his favorite. He likes it when I put a ball gag in his mouth and peg him <laughs> while calling him my dirty little whore. Okay, this is, this is enough. This, this is could enough. just go this right to SNL. If SNL I had any balls, if SNL had any balls, they'd just make that. Of course, yeah. Um, and I should. And just it would mention, be funny. <laughs> Kamala appeared on the podcast that is known for coining the term "gluck gluck 9000." Yuck yuck. And I just thought I would mention that for no reason at all. Now, I want to ask you guys, since Trump got the official invite from Alex Cooper to appear on Call Her Daddy as well, do you think that he should do it? Would that be a good idea for Trump no. right now? No. He doesn't know how to simplify it for that audience. I think it would be great for J.D. Like, Vance to no. go on Call Her Daddy. No, 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 no one should give them the time of day, they're not gonna convince anyone that I watches agree. Call Her Daddy to vote for Trump. So no. there's no reason to go on there because the only thing that could possibly happen is they can take clips out of context or or bring up uh, issues that make him look bad. There is nothing to be to be gained by going on that podcast, no. There is someone who I could gain. There is someone who could gain and it's right. Chase Oliver. <laughs> or Alex Chase, Cooper, she, obviously. Chase is for the gays, <clears throat> being as he is one. He is apparently into some weird stuff. I think he could do it. Wait, I don't. I'm not familiar with Chase this Oliver. Chase is the Oliver. guy that's running for the Libertarian Party. Oh, the, like that. oh okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Basically, the Libertarian Party went. What do Libertarians like? Okay, pick a guy who's the opposite of what all of those names? things. Chase Oliver, huh? Well, here's the here's the issue why <laughs> I don't think anyone that's actually trying to have an honest conversation should go on that podcast. No. Is it's a Mark Twain quote where when you argue with idiots, they're going to bring you down to their level and, and they're going to beat experience. you with experience. You cannot win when going up against Alex Cooper. How there's, many episodes has well, she there's done? There's nothing to gain. There's nothing to gain except make a fool out of yourself for all that the peanut gallery that is her audience. I don't know how I feel about it. Like at the same time, I totally understand what you're saying, Phil. Like it could only go badly for him. I can see so many ways 
that it would be terrible for Trump. But at the same time, I see that Trump usually shines when he's in an antagonistic environment, an antagonistic interview. And I don't know, like he thinks on his feet. That's why I said not JD. Like it would be yeah. even worse if JD went on. But Trump, maybe there's the, my, potential. I think my, my only, no, no, my, my point maybe. is right now we're less than 30 days from the election. It looks like Trump's leading, right? In mm -hmm. most of the places that he needs to. True. Or it's, it's, it's really close. And he's not gonna, there's no upside to going on it. Not for the memes. Sure, if it was, look, if it was, if it was, June or if it was May or if it was April get on there well okay yeah. fine it'd yeah. be fun I see where you're within from. 30 days not of the right. election there is zero benefit there is sure. not it is not worth the risk don't go on there it's only going to be a bad result again it's not that your your points aren't right about whether it would be entertaining but this Peak is comedy. a purely political decision right. there is nothing to be gained for Donald Trump going on there no well, and well it, I mean Trump JD Kamala even you're always welcome on Pop Culture Crisis. I if think. You're listening. And if that's a pro-abortion like <laughs> fan base, right? If he just says we took gave it back to the states, that's a red flag for them. They're going to yeah. freak mm -hmm. out. So uh, yeah, I mean, There's I don't think any time would have been a good idea. But I was saying, if there was ever someone in that like right-wing conservative media sphere, maybe Vivek would know how to speak their language. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.